Good day and welcome. I'm Rick, a man of history and your guide to the past. Today we're going to be returning to the Middle Ages and we're visiting again with our mouths as we return to pottage. Now in a previous video I showed you how to make one form of pottage. If you haven't watched it please do as it gives a good introduction to what is an important part of everybody's diet in the past. But pottage is today as it was in the past a versatile dish. It was the main food, the main warm food for those who work of medieval Britain and it was eaten right through to the 19th, 20th century. Today I thought we would do another and different version of pottage, one which makes for an excellent breakfast, which is what I'm going to be enjoying this morning. And breakfast, as we know, is an all-day meal. But before we get stuck in, a quick aside. I'm vegetarian and a vegetable pottage, a vegetarian pottage, is very easy to do and was very commonly eaten as meat was expensive in the past uh, and until very recently in fact. So for a great majority of the population meat would have played a small part if any part in their diet. However this particular type of pottage is one I've cooked many times when I did eat meat and it makes a, w a warm filling wonderful start to the day. If you ever got out of a tent on a cold and damp October morning with Senlac Ridge beckoning and the prospect of putting heavy, weighty, cold mail on, uh, I think you'll appreciate the, uh, the, the urge that the modern body has for a, a hearty start. So my usual recipe calls for bacon, and bacon it shall have, but I'm going to be using a vegan substitute. As ever, authenticity is important when you're creating historical food and when you're trying to bring people back to the past. But so is accessibility and, and so is making sure you've got enough energy to, to swing a sword. So when I talk about the bacon, mine is going to be a rather delicious soy alternative. But if you're making it at home, please feel free to use bacon and I, ideally cooking bacon instead. Right. This is a recipe I developed myself. It's based on an understanding of what ingredients were available to people in the past and on the lives they led. Pottage is a thick soup or a stew and it's made of cereals and vegetables, possibly some meat, and it was a staple of life. Combined with bread and cheese and, and with small beer, pottage provided enough to live an active and hard life, so you can just bet it was filled with calories. The actual ingredients would depend on the time of year it was being made, on geography, on social position, on wealth, and as only the richest had access to writing, particularly in the medieval period, there are very few actual recipes for working folks' food available. So this then is my version of a pottage, which works very well for breakfast or for any time of the day that you're feeling hungry. It will fill you up. But enough about me. Let's hand over to an expert and get cooking. I'm going to be cooking for you today uh, a lovely pottage. So rather than talk about it out here, why don't we move inside where all the ingredients are. Come with me. The most common vegetables you're going to find in a pottage are cabbage, onions, leeks, peas. And some of these store better uh, or dry better than others, but they all will last you through the winter. Other things you might find include um, mushrooms, and we're going to use some beautiful mushrooms today, and root vegetables such as parsnips or turnips, which again store very well. Today, of those vegetables, we're only really going to be using onions but leeks or peas would add very well to this as well. Cabbage tends to be fairly bulky, so if you're going to use that, it's going to be a key ingredient. And I'd be very happy to demonstrate a cabbage pottage for you if you're interested. Uh, mushrooms are found or cultivated, and they provide a lot of body and flavour, and we're going to take advantage of that. The mushrooms are going to form a key part of our stock. The grain that you use in a pottage is really important, and a variety of grains are used. Um, rye, wheat, barley, even oats all give body and um, energy. Today we're going to be using barley. Barley, like oats, is often used as food for animals. Uh, it's on the cheaper end of grain, but it's tasty and filling stuff. 
Additional flavour usually comes from herbs or spices, but spices are very expensive and we're not going to use any of those. We're actually not going to use any herbs either. Instead, we're going to get most of our flavour from the mushrooms and from the richest ingredient we've got. Now, the poorest might never eat meat, but for those that can afford to keep a cow for milk or rabbits for, for meat uh, or, or a pig for the winter, those that trap or hunt game or those that get scraps from the table of their wealthy neighbours, there can occasionally be meat in the pot as well. And today we're going to use some bacon. This could be dried and salted, this could be fresh, um, but our bacon today is cooked, it's dry and it will be delicious. It will give a lovely um, salty depth of flavour to our pottage. So you can see the ingredients are all here before me, just need to get them all ready and then we'll get cooking. The ingredients are all ready now, as you can see here. I've got my bacon that's cooked, sliced, diced, ready to go in. The um, onion here has been chopped up nice and chunky. The barley is ready to go. And the um, mushrooms have also been sliced up nice and big. The other ingredient, the one I haven't told you about, is in here, and that is water. You might be told that we don't drink water, and that's simply not true. We do drink a lot of beer, particularly small beer. It's full of nutrition, it's good for you. But as long as your source of water is clean, is safe, then there's no reason not to drink it. Well, my ingredients are all ready, so let's get cooking. So the process we're gonna follow is really very simple. We can start off by frying off the onions and then stewing the mushrooms in water over a low heat. Over time, that will provide a rich, dark broth and that will be the basis of our pottage. Once that's done, we'll add in the bacon, cook that for a while, and then once it's all ready, the bacon's falling apart, we'll throw in the, ba the um, barley. Let's uh, start with the onion. I'm just frying this off in a little bit of uh, olive oil, but you could use butter, you could use um, any other kind of oil that's available to you. You can even use vegetable oil if you'd prefer. So my onions are ready. You can see that they are sizzling away nicely. So I need to add the mushrooms and some water. Mushrooms first. And then plenty of water. Oh, hear that lovely sizzle. And make sure at this point, turn down the heat easier to do on a hob than over a campfire. Give it a nice stir. You may need to add more water, judge it for yourself. I think I'm probably going to have to top that up once the mushrooms are stewing away. But it's turned down so it's over a low heat now. I'm going to cover it up and let it get to work. So let's see how the mushrooms are doing. Oh yes, yeah, they're looking good. So I'm gonna add the bacon and I'm going to top up the water because you want lots of stock when the barley goes in. So bacon first. And then a little bit more water. Hope you can see it's looking nice and dark in there. It's looking lovely and rich. Should be really, really tasty, full of flavour for uh, well, when it's done. I'm getting hungry already. It's been another about 10 minutes or so, and you can see that it's all settling in nicely. Unfortunately, you can't smell it, but I do assure you that the smell is wonderful. So what I'm going to do is add in the, the barley, get the grain going, and it's going to just cook through until the barley is ready to go. Um, barley looks small, but it's going to, to suck in all this moisture and really grow. 
Uh, so I'm going to need to keep checking on it, keep stirring it, and keep adding more water um, so, I, so I get the right consistency. But for now, that'll do to start with. That'll do very well indeed. Well, it's been about 10 minutes and you can see it's thickening up really well. Starting to stick to the bottom of the pan. There's not much liquid in there, so I'm just going to top up the water. It smells really good though. It's getting me very hungry. So I'm adding about half a pint of water each time. I top it up. Uh, it started off with a little over a pint in, so it's it's kind of about two and a half pints of water all told now. Leave it to uh, stew some more. Once the barley is nice and big, full of flavour, it's going to be ready to eat. I'm looking forward to eating. I warned you, you need to check it regularly, so please, if you're cooking this, do, otherwise you're going to burn everything to the bottom of your pan which will be disastrous because it won't taste good and it will take a lot of cleaning. Well, I'm not far off missing that as well. So I'm going to add more water. It's another just over half a pint in there. And I'm probably going to need even more before it's ready to go. been about half an hour since the barley's gone in and it's not quite done but it's certainly getting there it won't be much longer it's about as thick as I want it I want this to be a little bit soup like I'm gonna eat it with bread so that's a um, good good contrast and it's just gonna take a little bit longer I'm not going any more water I'm just gonna keep an eye on it it's not gonna be long now So with a little bit of luck, it's ready to go. So, let's have a look. Oh yes, it's lovely and thick, and you can see that this is, is ready to go, it's ready to eat. So, time to take it off the heat, or in this case, take the heat off and serve it up. Time to switch spoons. I'm just going to take one nice little ladle full, see how it tastes. Oh, maybe two ladlefuls. It smells really good. Let's take it outside. Right. Let's have a look. See how it uh, how it's, how it's looking. It's looking pretty good to me, but proof is in the eating. Ooh. Mm. It's got real flavour. It's got loads of loads of different uh, textures in there. I can just tell this is going to be filling flavorful and just what you need to keep you going all day. I'm going to enjoy this. Well I hope you enjoyed that and you got an idea of how pottage can take on a variety of very tasty forms. If you try it yourself I hope it's as, as good as mine, I hope it's really tasty, full of flavor and if you do please let me know how it went. If you'd like to know more about food, if you'd like some more cooking videos or if there's a topic or part of history you'd like me to cover instead please tell me in the comments below. You can follow me on Facebook or Twitter and once I'm back out and around my Instagram is going to get much much more interesting. Meanwhile if you like this video please like it. If you'd like to join me again in the past please make sure to subscribe for more. So until next time stay safe, stay happy and I'll see you soon. Take care.